What is going on, everyone? Welcome into Big Time Football Talk. So I wanted to start with this. Patrick Mahomes did a tremendous job of uh, silencing the haters um, on uh, Sunday Night Football. What a tremendous win for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the team, Chiefs are a team that... A lot of people have, you know, really started to doubt. You've heard the, you know, the clickbaity Mahomes. Does he have any more? Is he still the top dogs quarterback? You know, as far as, you know, right in the discussion with, you know, him, Brady, Rodgers, is he still right there in that discussion? All he did was just went out there and just balled out five touchdowns. They got back to doing what they, you know, really need to do, getting the ball to Travis Kelsey. You know, Mahomes not trying to do too much, just distribute the football, let your speedsters, uh, you know, like Hardman, Hill, make do some work after the catch, you know, let Travis Kelsey break some tackles and, you know, make a little magic happen. Just so good at breaking tackles, such a, you know, strong, you know, just good all-around football player at the tight end position in Travis Kelsey. So, uh, but yeah, this look, this was a team that Andy Reid looked focused. They all look focused, and this is a team that just looks like they're, just hungry to get better you see you know Tyron Matthews even you know said that he needs to you know step it up and kind of you know come with more of like a you know tougher mentality ready to play so Kansas City Chiefs I'm still a believer in they're a team that I thought would get to the Super Bowl this year um you know it's still at this point it's still a little bit in question with the defense but um you know with them improving in Mahomes you know if he can continue to play this way you know you look at his numbers it's thrown a few too many interceptions but you know overall has been pretty solid still on the season and uh yeah the five touchdown passes last night the 400 plus yards was a uh you know a great step in the right direction for the kansas city chiefs and i thought it was fun that you know they kind of silenced and shut down a lot of the hate that was going on so uh credit andy reed credit mahomes credit the defense good all-around win and it's uh too bad for the las vegas raiders hopefully that doesn't you know step them in the wrong direction with you know everything that's gone on as far as John Gruden, Henry Ruggs and uh you know Damon Arnett being released and uh you know hope you know hope, hope the Raiders can rebound from this you know Derek Carr has some questionable decisions kind of just threw the ball up for grabs several times the defense you know was a little shaky for the Raiders but uh so good win for the Chiefs good step in the right direction uh questionable performance by the Raiders. We'll see who they go from there. Next, I want to get to the <coughs> excuse me, the college football rankings. Coming in at number one is the Georgia Bulldogs, a team that's looked dominant all season, very deserving of uh, the number one ranking, nine former five stars on uh, the de- just the defensive side of the ball alone. Number two is Alabama. Uh, with just the uh, one loss to Florida. Hasn't looked like the Alabama in recent years. I mean, they're not completely dominating, but, uh, you know, doing enough to win games. Just the one loss to Texas A&M on the, by three points on a walk-off field goal. Uh, number three, Oregon Ducks. Oregon, just the uh, one loss to Stanford in overtime on the road. Uh, number four, Ohio State. Ohio State, just the uh, one loss to Oregon at home. If you remember back in uh, week two, it seems like it's been a while. Number five, Cincinnati Bearcats. And uh, Cincinnati's an interesting team, and I'll have a, a bit of a take on them here in a moment. Um, undefeated with uh, their top win coming on the road at Notre Dame. Number six, Michigan. Michigan, just the one loss by four, 37-33 to to Michigan State at Michigan State a couple weeks ago. And then... Number seven, Michigan State, uh, with just the uh, one loss to Purdue. They're, uh, you know, um, also coming off the um, w- uh, nice win over Maryland. And then, uh, yeah, Oklahoma had a case, but then they lost to Baylor. Oklahoma was a team that I, I was pretty high on, even though it hasn't always looked pretty at, at all times this year. I thought Caleb Williams was uh, – Going to continue to to ball out. He's been a little, it was a little shaky in the Kansas game, shaky in the Baylor game. Actually got benched, and uh, Rattler came in, and then you know Rattler uh, was pretty underwhelming as well. So uh, yeah, Oklahoma it makes you wonder what's uh, what you know happens for them for the rest of the year. It's still a team with you know a lot of good players on you know both sides of the ball, offense and defense. But uh, 
yeah, I think Michigan State should be over Michigan. I think I'm not a crazy head-to-head person, but I think both of them having one loss. I think Michigan State, um, you know, winning the the game over Michigan. So with all things, you know, f- basically even, I think Michigan State should get the edge and have the number six spot over Michigan. In a way, though, it doesn't necessarily matter because Michigan State has still has to play Ohio State and Penn State. You get two wins there and you win the Big Ten Championship Michigan State's in uh, with Michigan they just have uh, a Maryland team that they should win coming off a, a nice win over Penn State if they beat Ohio State and you know I've, or beat Maryland beat Ohio State win the Big Ten Championship Michigan's in the college football playoff so yeah um, but well also well I guess I guess I retract that if Michigan State uh, wins out, then they would would get the edge, I believe, or I don't know with the three way tie exactly how that would work. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But bottom line, Michigan, and Michigan State have real opportunities to put themselves in a tremendous position, a very likely position to make the playoffs. So yeah, Cincinnati, and here's my take on Cincinnati: Why not give them a shot? I, I I don't I don't necessarily I don't think they're a top four team in the country as far like they would lose I think they would lose to Oregon I think they would lose to Ohio State I think they'd lose to Alabama and I think they'd lose to Georgia the four, top four teams but you know what it's kind of like it's, I, I kind of compare this to the way people want Cincinnati is like the way they want someone in a horror movie to go in the room with the chainsaw, it's like, you know, your first initial reaction is, you know, don't go in there by human nature, but in reality, you want to see, you know, you, you want to be entertained and thrilled by the movie, so you want him to go into the room with the with the guy with the chainsaw, but in reality, you know, he's probably going to get slaughtered. That's Cincinnati. You put them in the playoff, they're likely going to get slaughtered. Um, so it's Cincinnati is the team where it's like, don't go in the room, but in reality, I want to be thrilled. I want to be entertained, and I want something different. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of saw a little glimpse of, you know, what Cincinnati is. I mean, last year, people could say, oh, they almost beat Georgia. It came down to a field goal game. Georgia had several guys opted out, injured in that game. It's a, you know, by today's standard of the playoff, it was a meaningless game, and they really, and they still lost. So, you kind of got a glimpse of, you know, what Cincinnati is when they have their best shot versus another team, top opponent team's best shot like Georgia, uh, considering they're missing players, opt out, COVID, uh, you know, injuries, you know, opt, not even opt outs from COVID, opt outs from the NFL draft early. Um, so, but, uh, Yeah, that's kind of my take there. It'll be interesting. Tonight, the new playoff rankings come out. It should be so fun to see. Make sure you guys tune in to that. It's, uh, you know, always entertaining to, you know, have them talk about and, you know, have these these arguments that, you know, a lot of the stuff plays itself out. But, you know, like I I continue to reiterate, I'm a a four-team playoff guy. I don't want meaningless games. I I value the regular season a lot. And, uh, yeah. So thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in to this clip from Big Time Football Talk. Make sure to stay tuned uh, for more clips and full episodes from the show. Till next time, peace.